Hi everybody, my name is Sean O'Kane with Chip Estimate TV. My guest, of course, is John Blyler, a frequent guest, and uh, every month we'll be doing these uh, segments. I was uh, thinking about calling it the, uh, the X Factor, the John Blyler X Factor. X Factor. Everything you ever wanted to know about the technology trends, but we're afraid to ask. <laughs> uh, but we're here at uh, uh, Semicon West in San Francisco at Moscone Center, and uh, uh, as the famed baseball announcer uh, Vin Scully would say, as I look up, I see the azure gray and cerulean blue skies. <laughs> oh my, it's a great day for a conference <laughs> and a walk and talk with John. Cerulean, you know what? I, I, I know. Like that. How different. Oh, we were just here about a uh, month yeah. or so ago at the Design Daytona. Automation Conference. How different is that from Semicon West? Well, good, good point. There's lots of similarities. The two worlds are close together, but. The biggest difference is that this is this conference is dedicated to the process end. So you have the equipment, the big equipment, capital equipment manufacturers. You have the fabs. You have, and everything that, that supports that. You know, every kind of pipe and plumbing and electronics and, <laughs> and. But there's also the design part and the material guys. Right, right. So it's a it's a very different show. Very interesting. Great. Well, let's take a walk and uh, let's chat about. Uh who you're going to visit, uh, the first couple of interviews you're going to visit. Sounds good. All right. Let's do it. Let's go. So, um, so, so some of the folks that you're going to visit today, Semico Research. Yes. Marketing research firm that uh, puts together some really cool studies and, and, and research about uh, wafer assumptions for for the rest of the year. Yep. Um, royalties and IP, licensing, licensing, IP, and also ASIC design starts. Yes. And then you're going to go visit MEMS, MEMS. And, and that's Karen. Karen Lightman. Lightman. Yep. Now that's MEMS is everything's in MEMS. Little, MEMS is in everything. Mechanical and electric. The little sensors yes. and circuits and uh, all these mobile devices that make it do certain things. Yep. So real cool stuff. Let's divide and conquer. All right. So. You go that way, I'll go this way. Sounds good. All right. I'll meet up with you. Karen, um, MEMS really seem to be coming into their own now. What's, uh, what can you tell us about uh, directions, trends, interesting applications? Well, it's really exciting. I mean, we last year our theme was MEMS in the mainstream, and then yet this year it's MEMS is in the mainstream. And so what's next? And so we're taking on topics about MEMS commercialization. And um, so what I'm talking about is MEMS isn't really new, and but what we're talking about is the adoption of MEMS, the challenges of MEMS. Mm -hmm. Talking about, you know, the, maybe it's not the, the sexy things, um, the flashy, sexy things, but the, the hard things like the packaging and the testing and standardization. We need to talk about some of those challenges as well. Um, but then there are those sexy, exciting things that are about MEMS. Tell us more. Yeah, like there's, um, you know, quality of life uh, enabling mm -hmm. technologies. Um, I'm really excited about those Google Glasses. And I know, you know, those things when they like skydived into Moscone just a few weeks ago at the right. Google I.O. conference. And I know there's a lot of MEMS in there. In fact, um, I feel like um, I helped play a tiny little role in helping um, that, that MEMS get inside how, how those. So? Well, I can't tell. Oh. He said I'd have to kill okay. you later. But um, <laughs> it's, it's an exciting story that someday I might be able to tell you. I'm here with Jim Feldhan, president of Semico Research. Jim, earlier this week, uh, Gardner had some rather conservative numbers for the semiconductor for their semiconductor forecast. And over the last few weeks, a number of folks have had uh, numbers that seem to be all over the place. Uh, seems to be a lot of uncertainty. Can you can you share uh, your insights with us? Sure, John. There's, there is a lot of uncertainty, both on the political side and the economic side, and I think that's going to continue to, uh, to be with us for the next several quarters. But in spite of those uncertainties, there's some underlying trends that will continue to drive uh, semiconductor end markets and therefore the semiconductor demand. So uh, on the computing side, yes, desktops are declining. Our forecast is, is minus 5%. But then the other part of the computing market is the, is the mobile market. So you've got uh, portable market, which we include the the notebook and the ultrabook. We okay. think that's going to grow in double digit and ranges the at, um, at about ten to ten to twelve percent this year. Then you have the uh, tablet PC, which is still exploding, and mm -hmm. I've seen forecasts from sixty to hundred percent 
growth, our forecast is 70%. Wow. Um, so, and then the infrastructure side, everybody still wants to get Netflix and uh, YouTube. So all of that continues to grow very strongly this year. And so when we combine the entire computing market, we still are showing a double digit growth between 10 and 12%. Well, John, that was, uh, that was a very, very busy morning it was. here at Semicon West. I'll tell you what, and uh, in reward for all that great work and yes, great yes. interviews, why don't I buy you lunch? Hey, man, you're on. Okay, let's go. Okay.